Oh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself. Fudge Dice Roll here, and we are back in Iowa Plains. Uh, so as you can see, we're actually doing a little bit of harvesting here, and uh, we're still in June, and I, I, I figured there was a decent harvest contract for one of our fellow farmers. We were talking about that uh, the other night when, uh, we, you know, we heard at the co-op somebody broke a foot, and so here we are. We actually offered our services to come out and harvest their barley for them. So uh, they told us they were gonna give us a little a little of the leftover barley, and so we're gonna make ourselves a tidy little profit on this. Uh, you can see our X9 is absolutely filthy. We drove this down here to work on the field, and uh, yeah, this, this sucker is absolutely dirty. Uh, you might also notice in the bottom right-hand side that there is a kind of a new a new monitored thing and that is actually uh, from the combine experience mod I have added a few more additional mods into the game to kind of bring about a little more realism so this is going to actually kind of slow us down or speed us up depending on uh, you know the usage of power uh, and then it also kind of gives us an accurate uh, look at the amount of materials that we will be able to harvest, uh, you know, per acre or kind of, uh, you know, over an hour's time. So now because of this, this does substantially slow down and make things more realistic as to kind of how fast you would really be harvesting, which means that I actually added a third day on to the um, precision farming. So we'll actually have three days a month now, and that is just to, to be able to account for the substantial uh, additional time. I could drop the timetable down to 3x instead of 5x, but I think we'll leave it on 5x in three days. That sounds like more than enough time to get things done. But this is good. This is actually going to be a decent payout. I think we're going to be getting about $30,000, which would be really nice. Um, and then kind of where I would like to put some of it here is actually uh, at this... Um, this Kinsey Blue Drive, this is that's in the vehicle sales right now. This thing would be absolutely awesome to pick up. A uh, nice 12 meter working with planter that will allow us to do corn and soybeans. And uh, actually, after doing a little bit of IRL research, you know, uh, I have found that Iowa is one of the top producers of corn, like in the world. And so I think that that is kind of what I would like to uh, mix things between. Corn and soybeans are the two largest crops that are grown in Iowa. Uh, they take up over, I think it was 95% of the total crops that are actually farmed in the state. So, I mean, aside from our chickens, uh, I think that we will probably just do a big batch of wheat. We'll just kind of do wheat like once every couple of years. But I'll keep a huge batch of wheat uh, stored up in the silos to feed the chickens over a couple of years time. But I think primarily we're going to be looking at harvesting uh, and planting more soybeans and more corn. We've also added the conservative agriculture mod and that is going to change how we do some of our field care and cover crops. Uh, that'll include us doing things such as uh, crimping, as well as direct seeding into uh, planted crops. And that's the nice thing about this uh, Kinsey here, is that this is actually a direct seeder. Uh, we don't have to worry about cultivating or plowing, which means that this is actually going to give us a really good score. We can put down a cover crop of oil seed, of grass, uh, of a few different things, and we can directly seed into that field. So that'll be pretty awesome. I think what we'll be doing is we'll probably be going and getting rid of our, uh, of our planter and taking the money from this contract. And we will be putting that into uh, getting ourselves that, uh, that's that direct drill seeder, which is going to make, uh, which is gonna be awesome. So we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep like uh, you know our big uh, header here and everything because eventually what we will do is uh, we'll still kind of do some wheat here and there but I actually have a big wheat field that I'm getting ready to harvest 
And so I think we can kind of hold off on that. Uh, and that should be enough wheat to get us through a few years. But I'm definitely going to have to look at getting a, a nice big corn header. Uh, and we'll also still need this header for soybeans. So, But uh, we'll look into getting a corn header. I might go the lease to own route for that and just kind of make payments on it. But uh, we can hold off on getting that until we actually do a big cornfield planting. So that's not really going to be a capable until like next year so yeah so that's going to be pretty awesome so that's going to kind of be the state of things is that we're going to be looking at doing uh corn and soybeans as our major two crops uh, but we'll also be doing some additional conservative agricultural stuff so i'm going to finish this off and then i will take you along with me to go get uh get this all turned off and uh yeah i'll bring you guys along with me when we go do our trade-in and grab our new farm implement all right it is quite late and i still have to go pull the uh pull our x9 off of that field uh but yeah let's go ahead pop up to here take this take this guy Actually, this is good, too, because I needed to refill fuel in the tractor as well as uh, to get a little maintenance on the tractor anyway. So it's good we're here at the service depot. And we'll go ahead and put repairs on that. And put repair on you. That's good. Then I will go ahead and sell this. Bam, there you go. Got 37 k for that. Then we will go ahead and pick up this Kenzie uh, here. Pretty awesome to have. Buy that. And then... Back to see. Alright, and then while we're here, we're going to go ahead and also grab uh, two bags of seed. We have a little bit of seed. Actually, we might as well get three bags while we're here. Uh, we have about 700 liters of seed uh, on on the farm property right now. But since we're already here, uh, we might as well refill our seed bin in our new planter. And so, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. It'll do both soybeans and corn. Those are going to be our main crops uh, that we're trying to do. And it probably wouldn't hurt also maybe even to get a... Uh, a bag of fertilizer as well. I'm pretty sure we can use fertilizer. Or do we have to... other side? Oh, there we go. Alright, so we're getting a little bit... Oh man, we're really gonna have to crank this, aren't we? Okay, um, you know what? You guys don't really want to watch me do this part, do you? Uh, I think what we'll just do is we'll actually. Oh, there we go. There we go. We'll get this as nice and full up. I need to go pull the X9 off of that other field. There we go. That's great. So we need to go pull the X9 off the other field. Oh yeah, and then close out the contract. I think I want to pull the X9 off of that field before I close out the contract with the farmer and just go ahead and show you guys what we ended up doing here uh we ended up harvesting quite a bit here so we ended up getting a pretty good little payout but i don't want to turn it in yet with all my equipment still sitting on his field just in case uh that triggers the um the the damage of somebody else's field by driving over it i want to make sure that i'm completely off of the field before that happens because I don't want to be paying him uh, for damaging his field when you know really it was just me leaving the field after doing a bunch of work. so I'm going to bring this on back to the farm get it kind of put away and then we will go from there Actually, I don't know if this I don't know if this holds uh, solid fertilizer or not. I think I have a little bit sitting on the farm so i will grab that and try to put it in here 
get that dusty thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, actually, I do. I think I've got a little bit of a um, little bit of solid fertilizer sitting off to the side by the pressure washing station. So I will see if this has that tank or not. I'm not sure how much. Uh, I'm not sure. Thought thought this. Oh, well, you know what? That's fine. We'll figure it out when we get there. Uh, if it can fertilize, it can fertilize. If not, we do have the fertilizer spreader, which is all fine and dandy. We'll be able to work with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get everything kind of situated back on the farm, and I will see you guys next month for our big harvest here of Field 10. Hopefully we get a really, really good harvest of wheat off of this field. And uh, we'll see just how much more wheat we got this year with all of the extra work that we put into the field versus the previous years. All right, I will I will see you guys momentarily. Okay, we are back. It is July. Uh, we have an incredibly dirty... I mean, it's just going to get dirty, but, you know, let's kind of clean it off a little bit. We have... This is uh, super dirty from doing that barley field um, for the farmer who had the broken foot. So, here we are. Get the this nice and clean. Get our header nice and clean. So that we can make them dirty on our own field of wheat. Uh, so, towards the end of the month last month, towards the end of June, I decided to go ahead and spend a little bit of money here on the farm. So, what I have done, come over here. You might be able to see it for those of you who are keen. That's right. We went ahead and got a small diesel fuel supply put here on the farm. <coughs> this is... We're probably going to wipe this thing out. We have a 1,000 liters in here. Oh, yeah. We're definitely putting a hurting on this. Uh, this thing can store about 5,000 liters. Oh, we might actually burn all of this in our John Deere in, in our X9 here. It's looking mighty possible. All right. Still fueling. Still full fueling. And... Oh, boy. Let's see. Are we really that low? Oh, okay, cool. Woo. Because, yeah, like a thousand liters of this diesel ran me about, uh, ran me about, like, I want to say it was like $2,400. So, that was a little bit of an expensive refill there. But, uh, yeah, field, field, uh, field 10's looking good over here. We're, we're looking keen for a decent harvest. And also, uh, some people might be wondering to themselves, well, hey, farmer fudge you just sold your you just sold your your cedar how are you going to seed cover crops into your fields to which i say guess what you know, remember remember how we have this weeder here the awesome thing about this weeder is that it can actually plant grass uh canola and oilseed radish so with a nine meter working with this thing has got plenty of space and uh we'll we'll be able you know we might have to we might have to refill it kind of maybe frequently i don't think it's going to be that bad though uh oilseed radish doesn't seem to take up a whole lot uh for you know doing cover crops but we have we have the capability here we have the capability of planting cover crops still which is great so yeah uh that's that, that's huge also we could even do it here with our disc hero our disc harrow can also plant cover crops. So, I mean, we have we have options. Now, we don't really want to use the disc harrow just because uh, we don't want to... We're going to be trying to direct seed in, so we'll probably just use the weeder instead. All right, but let's go ahead, get our way up here, and take a look at what we got going on uh, with our, our wheat field here. So, I am going to go ahead and pull this over here. We're just going to 
go ahead and have our little combine header cart pulled over here to the side. And yeah, so that's looking good. That is looking real good. Oh, it would help if I had this pulled the correct way so that I could actually grab my header off the back of it. All right. <laughs> these, little, these little attention to details would be the real key to success here. A little bit of attention to detail, real key. All right. Um, you know what? Let's I pull it a little bit further down here. I think what I'll do is I'll actually come through here. I'll cut myself a little headland at the back so that I'm not bumping into my neighbor's field there. And then we'll kind of go from there. So I'm going to go ahead, pull this off to the side here. And that should give us plenty of room to go ahead, cut a little headland in just to keep from bumping that field. Actually, I wonder if they're going to need help on that field. Uh, field nine, you guys got anything? They're offering a harvest contract for, ooh, field 24. That's a nice big wheat field. That might be worth uh, going to help in Leroy Wilson. Um, so we actually helped out. Was it Leroy? I think it was Leroy. Yeah, I think it, Leroy. Leroy had an issue with a broken with a broken foot. We helped him out on his other field. Uh, so maybe just maybe we might also take their contract for working on their field. Uh, field 24. That could be a really nice little payday that we'd be looking at. Uh, speaking of paydays, let's take a look here in our used vehicle sale. So we have this Massey Ferguson 3670, and this thing's rocking 170 horsepower off the rippy rip here, right? So check it. Um, it does have a front mount here, but it does not have a PTO. So that's the same as our 6150M John Deere. Um, we can also throw a front loader attacher on here. We can toss narrow wheels on here, but we can't do them doubled up in the back. Um, if we were to run everything in here, we have the uh, the the Asaria Pro Compact as well as uh, putting Auto Track in here. Uh, we're looking at about seventy eight five for this bad boy, but this has got uh, thirty more horsepower of uh, pulling power, which you know, almost everything that we have that we're doing grassland care with uh, is sitting under 150. But I feel like that could just be, I feel like that could be pretty good comparatively to the uh, 6150. I feel like, uh, I feel like we could get some really good use out of that. I do have the 6150 up at the dealership getting serviced. Uh, it might potentially be I'm still thinking about it. I'll think about it while I'm harvesting here. Um, but it might potentially be worthwhile for me to go that route of having the uh, having the the Massey Ferguson over the 6150. Uh, it just, in the long run, it might be better to have on the field just for that extra capability of being able to pull it's a little more smoothly. All right. Let's go ahead and get our combine fired up here. And now with uh, the combine experience, uh, we actually have to turn the combine on kind of in a different sequence. So first we're gonna actually get the threshing system turned on here. So the threshing system is now turned on and now we can actually lower our header and turn our header on. And we're gonna kind of see here, uh, basically the tonnage per hour, the tonnage per acre and uh, how much stress we're putting on the on the the combine itself doing our harvesting so yeah okay so that initial push in here man it is really not wanting to go all right we are harvesting this wheat at two miles an hour which is not ideal uh, hopefully we will kind of speed up here a little bit as we're going but yeah, we're really pushing the engines to the max on this. Uh, now that's pretty wild because this X9, I mean, this thing is, uh, it's over 690 horsepower. It's got a lot of uh, oomph behind it, but we are just, uh, 
very slowly working through this field. It is asking a lot from us here. All right. This right here should give me a substantial enough turnaround point though. So really I just needed to cut this little headland in here and then we'll kind of start going, um, go start going up and down. Our yield on this is phenomenal. We are up in the much higher yield percentage right now, which is just great. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and we will leave the threshing plates running We'll go ahead and turn ourselves around here now the beautiful thing about the x9 is that because it is like a half track we actually do have a really good height turning radii with this so uh now also because we have this in here i'm going to enable my straw swapping here and we will be getting some good straw out of this field as well uh this is a fairly small field but i think i will stir st i will still turn on uh, our auto track here. Um, I actually don't even have anything for harvesting. That's interesting. All right, uh, let's go ahead and we'll start setting an auto track for the field and kind of see where we go from there. Okay, let's get this turned back on and we'll start mapping auto track for the field. Man, this is just really, really low. Okay, hold on. A little bit. I wonder if the crop is uh, still too damp. I wonder if it's still too early in the morning and the field is still too damp. Maybe. Maybe that would account for why we're moving so slowly. But I don't think that would be the case. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get our width figured out here. That's the good lines on it. We'll lock ourselves in, and then we will save this to auto track uh, that we have the field 10 artist. That'll be that. Now we go. We got that on, and that is awesome. Go ahead and cut that off. All right, so yeah, this is an incredibly slow. I don't know why we're, why are, yeah, there we see we have, it's like it wants to pick up, but then it doesn't want to pick up. I don't know what the deal is. I mean, this is, should definitely have enough oomph to be running this header. This is the, uh, this is the the stock, the preferred header for this uh, for this vehicle for this particular combine. Um, yeah, should be having really no issues with this thing. Hmm. So I'm not sure why we are kind of slowed down here. Headers looking right, harvesters looking right. I really don't think that there's anything that I can do kind of uh, buff this out. I guess this is it. We're just, this is just uh, this is just the speed of harvesting, right? This is how fast we'll be able to harvest this uh, harvest this wheat. <laughs> I wonder I wonder let's maybe do a little experiment here, right? What if I bump up time table so let's kind of speed up time here. We'll use a little bit of magic. And will it being later in the day actually improve? Will this actually improve our, uh, our pickup or not? It looks like it is. It looks kind of like the later we're going in the better our harvesting is looking. So that could be it. That could just be it. Maybe I just have to wait until a little bit later in the day for harvesting. Because now we're no longer sitting up in those super duper high 200s numbers. 
so that just might be it. Uh, yeah, it's almost now uh, 1500 or 3 o'clock for those who don't read military time, 3 p.m. Uh, so I think that might have been it. I think later on in the day, it gives the crops a little bit of time to dry. I need to look a little bit more into the Combine Experience mod. But, uh, okay. So that's cool. We are... We're chugging along now at a nice three miles an hour, which is way better than one mile an hour. And I think it's just because the crops are a little bit drier. So anyway, we will go ahead and kind of, uh, we'll go ahead and kind of montage a little bit of this because this is so much significantly slower. Um, yeah, we will, we'll do that. We'll, we'll try to make a nice speedy uh, kind of time-lapse video. So. I guess let's uh, get into it, huh? Okay, guys, so uh, we have, we're finishing up this last little pass here on the field. Uh, not too bad, so we got six, six passes, and then this is kind of our, uh, this is kind of our little kind of pass of shame. Not really a pass of shame, it's just, you know, we weren't tool implement. So I am really, really excited to see how we did so when we had started this field, we had uh, we had eleven thousand five hundred and fifty liters, eleven thousand five hundred and fifty liters of wheat already in our silo system. So we will see what we're at now. I made a couple runs back down to the uh, to the to the silo system already. So we will see what our final tally looks like. But guys, let me tell you what. I got an awesome call while I was here in the out here in the combine putting in some work. I got a call from Dave down at the uh, John Deere dealership, and uh, you know I had voiced to him that I was looking for something with a little more horsepower going on, a little more uh, you know a little more oomph behind it than our 6150M. 
and he just got back to me saying that uh, another one of their uh, another one of the the uh, the John dealer dealerships in Ravenport actually uh, has a 6M series uh, in their sales and that would do it for me that would be awesome uh, picking up a 6M series I would be able to just out the gate have 165 horsepower to work with unless I upgraded the engine and I'm going to have a whole lot of capabilities with that so I think what I am going to do after we're done here is uh, we're going to go ahead and make our way up to the dealership and we are going to uh, kind of ooh, have a little oven left, aren't I? Uh, of course. All right. Um, pop that out. Uh, we're going to make our way up to the dealership, and we are going to uh, we're going to see what what we're looking at uh, price wise on our trade in for the sixty one fifty M. Uh, so what we can have to put down towards this uh, this 6R. So. But I'm really excited about it. This is why, you know, good things come to those who wait. And instead of pulling the trigger, just uh, as soon as I saw that Massey Ferguson, I'm glad that I waited a little bit. So let's go ahead, get this filled up, and then we'll fill up on this last little bit. And then I will catch you guys down there because I would much rather use the 6R instead of this uh, instead of this 9 series here for bailing up all of this straw on the field. So I will catch you guys down at the dealership. Okay, so we made it up here to the John Deere uh, to the John Deere dealership. We're over here at the uh, the service shed, and we had services done on our 6150M. Uh, one of the services obviously was not detailing. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and take a look here. So, yeah, so Dave got this 6R series. It's a medium-sized tractor. And, I mean, just look at this thing. 165 horsepower right out the gate. Uh, we could even bump that up for 10K up to 185. Uh, how high can we go on this? 195. Okay, so we can go up to 195 on it for 15. So that gives us, what, a 6155? Okay, yeah. Um, I don't think we need to go that high. But, I mean, if we're going to go up to 185 off the rip, why not go to the 195, right? Um, we've got standard configuration. I would want to do a three-point to have a, uh, yeah, I'd want to have... A front and rear PTO, for sure. I think that is kind of the, the play here. Now the question is, so I can throw narrows on here, so that would be good. Um, I don't really think... Well, you know what? The panoramic roof might be nice. I do like that. And, oh, hey, look, we can throw a Starfire 6000 receiver on here, which isn't terrible. Um, I wouldn't mind having the 7000 series, but the 6000 is going to be fine. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I would want to have left and right beacons on here. Actually, I think I'd just get away with just the left beacon. Uh, the 100 year badge? Oh, why not? Throw that on the side, just, you know, 100 years a deer. Front loader attacher? Yes, I'd want to keep a front loader on here. Um, I think we'll go... Go with the John Deere loader attacher over the, uh... Over the, 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 what we have, um, a quickie on the 6150. And, oh, look, this already came, comes with the, um, the Asaria Pro Compact already installed. So that is awesome to see. And we throw GPS on here. So it's going to come out to about, uh, for, for just an absolute unit, this is going to come out to 99K. I mean, even if we were just to come through here and drop the engine down for now. That still only puts it at 84. Um, but I want to make sure that we have our, our GPS system in here. I want to have the full green star system, including our Starfire, because uh, I don't want to lose any of that functionality out on the field. So we're going to spend a little bit of money. I think I will end up just going and doing this, uh, this, this full-on engine setup here. So 
just shy of 100k. That's what we're kind of looking at already here in our balance, but we still have our trade in. So I'm going to go ahead and place that order. We're going to go ahead and buy this 6M series, and it's going to be awesome. So, bam. And now what we need to do is actually go ahead and sell our 6150M. And so now we have that uh, 6155R, and that thing is going to be... So we'll go ahead... Oh, look, we're going to get 73K for this. So honestly, um, we didn't spend a whole ton out of pocket. That's That's actually great. Uh, about 20k about about 18 20k and we are going to need to do some maintenance on this guy but that is fine um and look at this look at this new to me but man absolutely gorgeous go ahead and get a look here at the inside i do love this panoramic uh roof man that is that is pretty slick and it's nice to see all of our everything's looking real good in here. We got plenty of room. Yeah, this is gonna be a little nice. This is gonna be a nice ride. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy over to here. We do need to do some mild repairs, just a few little things. Uh, this tractor's already got a already got 33 hours on it. That's honestly not that bad. Uh, 33 hours isn't terrible. So I'll put a little bit of repair onto that. And what an absolute unit, man. Uh, 6155R, this thing is going to have some real oomph to it. Uh, it even already goes faster, 32 miles an hour versus uh, 24 miles an hour. So, yeah, this would be nice. This will kind of get us moving and grooving a little bit quicker here. Um, oh, also, also, uh, don't think that I forgot about the tally. So, like I said, we had, we had... 11,550 liters of wheat in our silos, right? 11,550 liters. We have 82,447 liters in our silo now, meaning that off of that field, off of field uh, 10, we had a total harvest of 70,000 897 liters that is nearly double nearly double what we had with our initial harvest year one that is the power of fertilizing and doing soil cultivation and all the stuff that we did uh that is absolutely just awesome man. i am so stoked by that that is <laughs> that's just phenomenal i mean we doubled our output at our present lumber of chickens that would be enough food to feed uh our chickens for uh nearly nearly eight years we have nearly eight years of feed for the chickens with that amount so i am pretty uh, i'm pretty impressed with that we're gonna come into here we're gonna grab our baler we're gonna start bailing up that straw i'm also gonna bail the straw at 150 centimeter bales instead of uh, instead of up at 180 like i did with the previous ones just because i was having issues with ratios mixing uh, our tmr and the tmr parts so i'll be saving the bigger bales for actually laying straw in the uh cattle barn but uh but yeah so we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff uh, off the field here, and I think that will be good. That will be a good episode here of us on the farm here in Iowa. If you have not, uh, if you have not already, you know, have access to this. This is okay. This is the middle of the road. I don't have access to that. All right. Um, hold on. Can I? Might be a little. Can I do that? I... I access like the roads yes all right now that should go away yep aha i do have access nerd so i just wanted to get that off the road there um let me make sure that i'm also yeah 150 bales and i am going to turn on automatic dropping but yeah uh thank you so much for being here uh in iowa plains as we have been enjoying our farming, I am excited 
to really start uh, pushing the envelope when it comes to picking the realism up a little bit more. Uh, I've been having a ton of fun. I'm excited to get into a lot more corn and, corn and soybeans, as well as more animal husbandry here on the farm, and uh, really just kind of pushing things, as well as getting some more uh, educational kind of information here, blending education and fun by kind of going over some of the things that farmers deal with in real life, uh, kind of talking through some of that stuff, as well as looking forward to using more of these realism mods like uh, like conservative agriculture, like the uh, combine experience and whatnot. Uh, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun to me. I love kind of playing this a little more on the realistic side. And uh, I've been also kind of enjoying the role play aspect of things. So if you have too, then please consider subscribing. Uh, over 85% of my viewer base is not subscribed to the channel, and if you could help by subscribing, you will definitely help me reach that goal of 1,000 subs by the end of the year. Uh, 2024, I really would like, love to hit that 1,000 sub mark. Literally can't do it without you. Uh, likes, comments, and subscribes. I know it's cliche. Some people might say it's ick or it's cringe, but really, like, I can't do it without you guys. Uh, helping to give traction to my videos through uh, YouTube's algorithm. I'm a tiny, tiny fish in an absolutely massive ocean, but with your help, uh, you know, maybe we'll get other people, uh, you know, other people on the hook. Yeah, yeah, angler terms. <laughs> anyway, guys, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, likes, comments, subscribes. If you want to hit the notification bell too, that's great. But uh, until then, Fudge Dice Roll, and I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. Fudge Dice Roll, signing off.